Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Welcome et bienvenue to Hello, Bonjour, Alberta. I'm Mark Lalonde. And I'm Anne Boiteau. In today's episode, we're pleased to introduce you to Susan Oriou, uh, a celebrated and awarded Albertan author, literary translator, and interpreter. Welcome, Susan. Mm, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Let's get started by finding out a little bit more about you, okay. specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, where were you originally from, and how did you end up in Alberta, and, uh, and how did you end up in the, in the profession you're in? Um, I'm originally from Calgary. <laughs> wow, that's the <laughs> third that's one. That's how she came to Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I started loving French when I was in high school, and so I signed up to be a jeune fille au pair in Paris after high school. And uh, after that, I came and went and did my Cégep de Saint Laurent in just outside of Montreal and went back to France and then ended up in Calgary. <laughs> and were you always a writer as a young, pr young woman? I've always been an avid reader. Okay. And yeah, I had the dream of writing from the Very age of 18, but I think it took me a number of years to have enough confidence to actually write something of my own. And what was your first book or your first uh, uh, of? Uh, my first, I started with short stories. Ah, it's okay. a lot easier to keep them all in your head. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, my first short story was just uh, published in a University of Calgary, I think, publication. And then I had several more that were published. And then I worked uh, for a number of years on my novel. And uh, it came out several years ago now. And I've finished a second novel that sounds like it will be published next year. So. Good. And your first novel, um, you it, were wrote, awarded already on your first novel? No, no. The, this, this is okay. my own writing. So I was shortlisted. Ah, okay shortlisted for two um, awards with this uh, novel. Damselfish. Yeah. About a young artist living in Mexico on a short stay there. So. Ah. Uh, Can you talk yes. about some of the other subjects of the other books? Because you've, you've published quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, most of the other books I've published are my literary translations. Translations. Okay. okay. And I started doing literary translations at about the same time I screwed up the courage to work on my own writing. And uh, yeah, I've loved doing it. I translate from French and Spanish. And my very first one was a Spanish book I read. I took it out of the library and I loved it. And I thought, oh, I'd like to translate it. So I translated it. And then I went about finding a publisher, which is the opposite way that opposite you usually way. go about doing yeah. it. <laughs> and and you, then you must go back to the original author about it also. If that's right, the original or either the publisher rights. or author. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so that was published and then mostly I've translated from well either from French into English, but several Spanish into English. And uh, we just did a few English into French children's books this year. Oh, so that was going in the other direction. different. Yeah. yeah. So what's your approach to doing literary translations? Is, is there something very specific that you try to keep in mind as you're doing it, uh, as opposed to just translating the words? Yeah, no, you certainly can't just translate the words. Um, I, I found there's a theory that we learned, but it, it was a very simple theory. And it's mostly it's to get at the author's intended meaning and to make sure that <coughs> his or her intended um, the emotions they want to s 
trigger mm -hmm. in the reader mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, you trigger the same emotions with your translation. So I find, in a way, you kind of forget about the words. And you, uh, obviously, yeah, when you're revising, yeah. you check back. But the important thing is to get the meaning, all the different notions that are in there, but also the, the impact, the emotional impact. What about the cultural context of, of books? I mean, some books that mm -hmm. you'd be translating from English would be in a particular kind of cultural context, which is not, well, I if it's in French, it's, it's not an Anglophone context. Yeah. How, do you, how do you deal with that? Well, it helps. Especially the, the, the sorry, the, 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 the lingo yeah. that might be inherent in that culture. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it does mm. help. I've lived in Quebec. I've mm. lived in France. So when I do from mm. French, it's usually one of those two. I've um, been in Mexico. I've lived in Spain. Uh, and so I do have some sense of the cultural. It's also kind of knowing what you don't know. <laughs> and mm. and and making sure that you find out. I guess if it's a, a very French story, you can, you can uh, seed a few French words in it, you know, they can refer to each other as Madame and Monsieur, even, even in English. Yeah, and it really depends, because sometimes the, the context is important, the setting is important, and sometimes it isn't. Right. Mm -hmm. like it isn't necessarily or set in France or Quebec, or so then you wouldn't do that, but otherwise, yeah, you do have little clues throughout. Mm, that sort of thing. And how long does it take? Um, it doesn't take me long to do my first draft, but then I have to put it aside and then I have to pick it up again and put it aside because the goal is to get as far away from the original language as possible. So it only sounds English in English or French in yes. French. And not like a, yeah. a translation. Yes. yes. So. And tell us a little bit about uh, the awards, the recognition that you've, um, that you've had. Well, I, I was, um, for my translations, I've been shortlisted three times for the Governor General's Award for translation. And then the last time I won a, the award. So I won it, this is when is you... Is that d French and English or...? French oh. to English, okay. yeah. Um, and so when I, when you do win, instead of a medal they give you, they um, have a binding, a leather binding for your book. And so... Um, this was Pieces of Me. I translated a book by Charlotte Gingras, a Quebec writer. And um, I was actually, I, I translate both adult fiction and, and young adult and even children's books sometimes. And I never thought when this, I had this third shortlisting, I thought, well, I'm not going to win because in the translation category, um, you're up against other adult fiction, other adult nonfiction, uh, poetry, plays oh, and, and so this was a young adult book I thought oh well I'm so glad I was shortlisted but I never thought it would win so when they called me I said are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well That's it was great. your turn obviously. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, as you say it's quite a wide field. Yes yeah it's that not just the one genre. Yeah that beautiful medal. Oh and the medal there? was uh, a couple of years ago I was awarded that by France. It's um, the um, a Chevalier. Uh, so you're given the name of Chevalier in L'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres de France. And um, they, it was for my work for Francophonie, La Francophonie. So it's, oh. it's like a knighthood. Chevalier. Well, I guess so. <laughs> well, not, I, not directly, I, I, it's a very <laughs> prestigious <laughs> award. In At France. first I asked, well, since I'm a woman, is it Chevalier? They said, no, no, Chevalier. <laughs> <laughs> L'Ordre des Chevaliers. Right. Yes. That's what it's done. Yes. <clears throat> you also yeah. do translating. As a matter of fact, I understand you were doing some this afternoon. Oh, interpreting. Interpreting, interpreting pardon yes. me. Interpreting, yes. Yeah. Uh, you must have had some interesting interpreting gigs from oh, time to time. I have, yeah. I've, uh, what I love about interpreting is you can be interpreting in any field. So I've done scientists, physicians, artists. Uh, I worked at the Olympic Games in Calgary and in Vancouver. Um, national and international meetings of all kinds. So I it's fascinating work. Is that instantaneous? Yes, yeah, uh, simultaneous. Yeah. Simultaneous, simultaneous interpretation. interpretation. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, in conference interpreting, which is what we call ourselves, there's simultaneous, which is usually when you're in a booth mm -hmm. and a 
few seconds, you just say everything yes. the speaker says with a few seconds lag. Um, but there's also consecutive interpreting. And that's, for example, if there's just one speaker up on stage, you sit next to them and they say a few, a few sentences and you take notes and then you repeat it in the other language. So that one isn't as often because it can take twice as long. Yes. But actually it's my favorite because you're a person. <laughs> Some people think <laughs> yes. we're just a machine in the back of the room. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, and, and yes, because it true. also, in simultaneous interpretation, um, you do it for a certain amount of time and then somebody else picks That's up right. and we continues. That's right, we spell each other off every half hour. Every half hour. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, because it's so intense. It's quite demanding, I yeah. think. Yes. yes. H have you ever done any uh, sessions uh, for uh, negotiations? Uh, oh, political yeah. negotiations, yeah. that sort of thing. That yeah. must be especially demanding because, uh, or, or, or do you avoid uh, transmitting the annoyance in the voice no. or whatever, <laughs> something that someone might not well, notice? Well, you usually have to convey everything, but maybe a degree lower Kay. because otherwise it almost sounds like a caricature. If you, yes. so, you know, you have to convey annoyance or vexation, but you have to be sure not to overdo it. Just, just a bit. And how long do you think it, it took you to get to a comfortable and not stressful point? You know, at yeah. the beginning it must be Yeah, kind at the of beginning stressful. every conference is very stressful. Um, now still, if we're, being, if we're being broadcast or it is a bit more, if it's a major political event, you're always a bit more stressed out about it. But no, it did take several years to feel really comfortable. And how often do you do it now? I, I'd say on average maybe 10 days a month. Oh, really? but, um, and you, I, I suppose you need to keep that up to also? Uh, no, no? I, I don't think so. If you do it no. that often? Yeah, the technique you yeah. kind of, the first years, the technique you kind of master. So. And I, in Canada, I imagine it's, it's almost always French to English or English to yeah. French. You don't do a lot of Spanish. Uh, I do some Spanish, Spanish with consecutive. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I love that too. Yeah. It's That's interesting. Yeah. So, what are you working on these days? What are your plans <laughs> for the future? What's what's uh, what what can we expect from the Susan Oriu in the uh, in the years to come? Well, this is uh, a book that we've just finished translating, but now it's in the editing stage, so I'm sure we'll get it back. This was the French um, Servolet, and actually the author was on French CBC TV last night and on French CBC radio this morning. Uh, she's an amazing, amazing writer, uh, and she's written about the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Oh, wow. And uh, I think she's being recognized as someone who has spent time really looking into the issue. She spent time with the families. She spent time interviewing activists, going to all the rallies. She's looked at all the reports, United Nations reports, and uh, come out with this book that is, I think, really... What is interesting too is she's actually French, but has been living in Quebec for the past four years. And so she comes not knowing Canada at all and saying, what is happening in this country? And she's able to explain it for all of us. So. Well, thank you very much to our guest, uh, Susan Oriou. Thank you. Alberta author, literary translator, and interpreter. <laughs> thank you. Please stay with us. We continue en français.